Da 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 da. It's epic. Hello, everybody, to another episode of Our Vision. We are here again in the Bio Parque this time in another part, where, once again, however, the goal is to create a climax ecosystem, not just plant trees, create an entire vertically integrated ecosystem. Why do we do this? In the end, this takes way longer. Last in the last video about centropic agroforestry, I think I talked about how this takes years to create an entire climax ecosystem while all of these tree planting campaigns, look, they just put in trees, it's a little bit of work in the beginning and bomb, you have a forest. Well, sadly, it's not that easy because, well, let's first look at the studies. When you just go out to plant trees, the success rate of those seedlings is incredibly low. For example, 2019, you had the big president of Turkey, Erdogan, going out saying, yes, we are going to regreen Turkey, it's going to be amazing. And then three months after they planted over a million trees, 90% of them were dead. That's not really helping. That's just an incredible waste of effort. Now, why does this happen? This happens because trees, especially climax level trees, need very rich soils, they need a protective area to grow up in, and a microclimate that supports their growth. In the end, just imagine, you walking into a forest coming out of a field. It's very different. When you're out on the field, the sun hits you directly, everything feels hotter, and you enter the forest and it's like, ah, Everything's so much colder, you have a humid area, and that's what a tree needs. That's how trees grow up. They have a supporting area around them and it creates a microclimate and other plants that are connected to them through the mycelial subterranean network of fungus to exchange nutrients, help them out. It's incredible what happens there. I'll make another video on that at some point. So that's why we here try to create vertically integrated ecosystems instead of just planting trees because we want to support the climax species through their growth in order to in a few years even it does take a long time with these sorts of things actually bring through the seedlings instead of having almost all of them die this means we plant and then there's an incredible amount of effort in the maintenance getting the ecosystem through those stages but it's worth it because in the end you don't just have a tree farm you don't just have a lot of pine standing somewhere that's not habitat we're trying to create biodiversity again because biodiversity is what's going to help us get through the changing climate that is coming and if you just have pines that does that's not a lot of ecological niches that's a very limited area of niches where a few species can thrive but not a large diversity. While if you have an entire ecosystem, you have many fold niches, and that's when you're able to support larger predators and so on as well. Because there's something called ecological succession. That is one thing that we use here in this system a lot. That's one thing that we use in Centropic Agroforestry a lot. It's basically the theory that when you get to an entirely eroded land, like if we go to the max, 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 a volcano just erupted. Magma flowed in. There's nothing alive there, not even some sort of bacteria. How do you start there? You don't start by planting massive cacao trees or something like that. That The soil won't be able to support that. No, the first steps that come in are weeds. They're great colonizers. That's the first level. They come in, they can survive with incredibly little amounts of nutrients, and grow there. They die after a while. That's great. Biomass comes into the soil, becomes fertilizer for the next little amounts of bushes, like here, for example. They grow. They die. Awesome. Again, biomass for the next level. Now you have some smaller trees. They grow. Awesome. They die. 
biomass on the ground, and so on and so on and so on and so on, until you have a climax ecosystem. But this comes in steps. And as those plants get bigger and bigger because the soil conditions become better, because the bushes create shade and a small microclimate for the saplings of the bigger trees to grow and so on and so on, parallel to that, you can also get animals coming in. A place where a volcano just erupted will not be able to support wolves, bears, or whatever other large predator. Ain't gonna happen, there's not enough food. First come the bacteria, then the insects, then the smaller animals like mice. Then on the mice you can feed foxes and so on. On that you can feed larger animals, and so on and so on and so on. Which means that if we really want an incredibly diverse ecosystem, their succession has to happen. You can't just immediately start with climax trees. Ain't gonna work. It takes longer, but what you end up with is something incredibly more stable. So that's regeneration. Awesome, beautiful. But as we just said, regeneration can take one, two, three, four, five decades, while conservation takes zero decades. Conservation means preserving the already existing climax ecosystems that we have. That means that in theory, while regeneration is a lot of fun, seeing something grow that you've planted is a lot of fun, conserving places like the Amazon or whatever may still exist in your area is way more effective. Because once you have a climax ecosystem, no matter if it already exists or whether you've regenerated it, that's a key ally in continuing regeneration. You might have seen this at the edge of a field. Humans have cleared this area out, but next to it, there's still a climax ecosystem. When you've seen a field, seeds from the forest drop in. It constantly tries to expand, first with weeds coming to the field, then smaller trees and so on and so on, which the humans that want to use that field constantly have to keep back. So preserving climax ecosystems that already exist allow us to regenerate a lot quicker in an area because you have a seed bank, because you have something that is so full of energy that it can support areas around them to regrow that. And that is incredibly, incredibly important. That's why when you hear studies of the Amazon close to being to the tipping point where it loses that ability to regenerate itself and potentially will turn into grasslands, basically, which is another ecosystem. That's okay. In some places, we've kind of messed up the local ecology because we've tried to regenerate grasslands um, and taken away the bases of animals that have lived there. But in the end, conservation is going to help us a lot because we create these or we keep these climate ecosystems that can help us seed and then regeneration in the places where there's nothing left to conserve. That's the logic. That's what maybe effective altruism would say. Just work your ass off in Europe or the United States to send all of our money into conservation projects somewhere on the other end of the world to get the most bang for the buck. Regeneration is incredibly important because it allows to reorientate our communities to places where we live towards a different mindset, a different way of looking at the world. It allows us to think of our place inside of the ecosystems that are around us, be they natural, social, or economic, and see how we can improve them, take back the sovereignty in our own heads to look at our world and say, we can do this better. And on top of that, while maybe saving some ecosystem on the other side of the planet is worth it, local regeneration efforts can have a massive impact on your local climate system. So while you might not be stopping global climate change, you can stabilize your local climate and prevent floods, prevent wildfires in your local place. Do support conservation projects all around the world, but do also regenerate your community and your local ecosystems. Thank you for watching this episode of Our Vision. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to share the gift of inspiration, send this to a friend of yours. 
I wish you a great day.